Hello, this is Magnus here. And today I want to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind that I haven't mentioned about the cameras, but it's kind of like the elephant in the room, especially when it comes to video recording with the Canon 5D Mark IV. And that's the MJPEG codec. Now I had a brief video or a couple of videos with that codec and talking about that codec before, but now I really want to dive into it. Why was that codec used? What's the benefits? And is there really any benefit when comparing it to a more advanced codec such as H.265? I wanted to explore that. And the only way I knew how is to really do some research on the technology of MJPEG and then comparing it to H.265. So let me start with this. What is MJPEG? How does it do compression? Is it really compressed because the files are so large? Let me explain. MJPEG, what it does essentially, 30 JPEG images per second. For every one of those frames, it takes one JPEG image. And it just keeps moving like that. Now, is that compressed? Yes, because a JPEG is technically a compressed picture. So each frame is a compressed picture, but each frame is taken individually and then combined together to form a video. Now, what benefits does this serve and why would want somebody want to use uh, MJPEG as a codec or as a preferred codec? Well, we'll get into that in a second. What about the other compressed formats such as H.264 and H.265? Well, I'll begin with H.264. The compression as far as I understand it, the way that's done in those codecs is that the video will keep track of what changes in your scene from one frame to the next. So as if you have a standard, such as what I'm recording now, a scene that really doesn't move much, besides my movements, anything else in the background that's not moving, it doesn't have any new data for that type of uh, footage that is being recorded, simply because it's not changing. So why retake that footage for every frame when technically you can just compress the data behind me and really only keep track of my movements? That type of codec data compression is what allows the H.264 codec to be so small when compared to something like MJPEG, where it literally takes a full shot of every frame 30 times a second max on the 5D Mark IV. H.265 goes a step further by being more advanced when it comes to that same mentality of compressing footage that really doesn't move and really just trying to pay attention to what actually does move. It allows for a more hardware-based decoding. Your computer would have to be, computer or any other software would have to be a bit beefed up to be able to handle the complex codec of H.265 to decode it and get you the, the quality footage, footage that you want. It handles, let's say, just more advanced calculations when it comes to each frame to handle all that, the changes in footage frame per frame. What are the disadvantages of doing that? Well, when you have a lot of footage that's moving and each frame is not what you want it to be because it keeps moving, each frame is just different from the last frame. What happens is, is that you'll have a lot of artifacts that look a bit blocky as it's trying to calculate what the next frame could possibly look like. And every once in a while, a few frames, it'll refresh itself and take a, a fresh image. So it'll look like it'll pop back to what it should be before it loses quality. Now, that happens depending on your bit rate at a large or small scale. So the higher the bit rate, the better the compression and the the less noticeable those imperfections in your footage are. Though they'd still be there, higher bit rate, it's less noticeable. So sounds like when you listen, when you think about it, that MJPEG, since it's taking a fresh shot each time, could be the better choice. Only because although it's a higher bit rate, of course, you don't get that same artifact that you would get with um, compression. Now, H.265 compression is pretty advanced and it's pretty good. So you'd have to consider that compression, you're gonna get very little imperfections. 
if any at all. Where MJPEG, you know, that shouldn't exist in the MJPEG world because it's not doing that type of compression when it does each frame. So I learned this based on my research, but I wanted to take a look and to see exactly what the difference is. So I had to run my test. What did I do? H.265 recording is what my NX1 does. 5D Mark IV, MJPEG. In these shots that I'm going to present to you, I'm looking for imperfections or the blockiness, if that's noticeable, in the Canon or the NX1. I want to see what happens. So I'm just going to put it to the test. I recorded a couple of sample shots. And first of all, I want to see if it's noticeable. And what I did was I moved the camera around a lot to see if it's noticeable or not. But if it is noticeable, I want to point it out and say, hey, look, this is an obvious advantage. But if it's not, then really, is there a difference? Let's go to the computer and find out. Okay, so what I've got here I'm at the computer and what I did was I recorded the same scene with both the Canon 5D and the NX1. I just recorded a scene where in 4K where I moved the footage around a lot so I knew that the pretty much the frames had to refresh themselves. This of course is H.265 footage and then the Canon was MJPEG and same, same ideal just moving the footage around. Then I imported them in Adobe Premiere Pro enlarge the size from 100 to 1744 when it comes in scale lay them both side by side so we can really take a good look at the details of the pretty much compression artifacts if we can see them i wanted them to pop out and be big so let me enlarge this screen right here the preview screen so we can see now first we are looking at the samsung footage that's converted into h.265 now one thing you've got to take into mind here is that if there's any noise it's because ISO levels were at 800 and you know it should be minimal but they still might be present. Now as I move forward frame per frame you could kind of see, let me see if I can bring up some brighter footage here, you could kind of see some trailing artifacts that tend to happen a little bit based off of the moving footage. Here it's a little bit more present frame per frame as it refreshes. It refreshes the necessary pixels and what it doesn't need to refresh sometimes you know would be better compression but when you refresh a pixel in H.265 or move it around that's when you get that those added artifacts and a bit of blockiness. See I think it, it's a, a bit prevalent here especially in these patches over here this rough footage right here is usually a, a defect when it comes to refreshing the frames in the compressed footage. Now we're talking zoomed in a significant portion so even though it's present it's very 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 tiny very small these, these little artifact defects if I'd call them. Alright so moving forward let's go to the Canon 5D footage and see how the artifacts, if any, appear in this footage. Now going frame by frame, uh, this is somewhat bright. I think you could see here that there's noise levels. Now the noise levels that you see here in a frame by frame is really a result of the ISO. ISO was 800. And when recording at that ISO, it kind of just did this noise all around when it came to the footage. But there is no, from what I can tell, as you see as I move forward quickly, this noise just kind of moves around in the shot. Just moves around, not really based off of the footage that's being recorded or each JPEG image. It's just the natural noise that's appearing as far as I can tell, I mean, from my interpretation, whatever you guys see is up to you. But as far as I can see, it's a consistent noise that really doesn't have anything to do with the shot, but has more to do with the fact of the ISO levels and the way the camera processes uh, this amount of light and absorbs it in. However, you know, zoomed in significantly, it, it's really not dependent on how the frame changes. It's just dependent on the noise levels that I had. 
So that's how I determine the quality of that footage. It's basically, it's refreshing every time and you'll get a clear image every time. Granted, I'm zoomed in heavily on this footage. Now, I'm gonna go back to the NX1 footage because you just saw how that's compressed. And I wanna, again, basically see the difference. It doesn't have that same ISO noise. It's not anywhere present in this footage, but there's definitely artifacts that happen as each frame changes. As I'm going faster, it's probably a little bit more prevalent where you can see that each refresh in the frame causes a bit of artifacting here and there. Again, hard to see, very, very small, even when I'm zoomed in this amount, this much. Let's play the footage again, full screen. This is the Samsung footage. That artifacting, can you really see it when it comes to this level of footage? I don't think so. This size as well for the Canon 5D, hardly pre prevalent. There's really, even the noise is, is almost next to impossible to see. So there you have it. Now, however this decision came or, or however the footage looked, it's really based on you whether this codec is uh, better and using the higher bit rate, or if you can deal with the very minute artifacts in the newer codecs. I mean, technology and that codec has progressed so much, is so, so has the bit rate, that it's almost non-noticeable, especially if you're using a high megabits per second. So the difference is minimal, if at all noticeable. One thing I can honestly tell you is that on the Canon, I really didn't see any artifacting or defects in the footage based on the codec. The only defects that I saw were based on the, on the ISO levels and the natural noise that came in. The, the compression of H.265, I did see some you know compression artifacts, but it was nothing that would affect my film shoot or footage because quality was high enough to be usable. When it gets darker, as I've seen in other uh, clips that I've, that I've shot, then that, that artifacts becomes a little bit more prevalent, especially with darker shots. But at a well-lit scene with low ISO levels, then it's really not that big of an issue. So I do believe that the MJPEG codec in a darker scene would probably be the best choice only because although it's a higher bit rate, you have less noise that's produced by artifacts. However, it's all public opinion. And that's, that depends on the user. And to me, my honest opinion is no matter what camera you're using, whether it's a 1970s camera or a DSLR or a professional video camera, Panasonic or Sony, it doesn't matter the camera that you're using. What really matters is the person behind the camera and their ability to take great photos. I believe that in cinematography as well. Doesn't matter that the camera that you're using, it does when it comes to the film that you want to produce and the quality that you're looking for. But the quality of the camera matters only to the cinematographer who's talented and can use what he has to his advantage to film the film that he needs to produce for his audience. So when it comes to this codec battle, at this point, does it really matter? I'll use both cameras and I'll be pleased with the results, I'm sure. If you've got any comments or questions, of course, as always, leave them below. Thank you for continuing to watch and support my page. I appreciate it gratefully. And finally, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus and I'm out. I'm really out. I got a trip to Texas coming up, so I'm out. See you later.